Hi everyone, in this second video on the accelerometer in Godot, I want to show you how to turn your phone into a wireless gamepad using WebSockets. You'll be able to control a game with the phone's accelerometer with no noticeable latency. Without further ado, let's get started. Before diving into the code, I want to explain why I chose WebSockets for that. Obviously, there are lots of ways to make a phone communicate with a desktop computer. You could think of Bluetooth, for example, which seems a better choice when it comes to sending a low amount of data without consuming too much energy. I'm not entirely sure how easy it would be to do in Godot, but I believe it could be done. I wanted to try WebSockets, as they seem very easy to use and quite good with performance. Also, WebSockets are very standard now, and you could talk to a number of different languages or devices that support them. For example, you could totally imagine creating a custom controller and talking to Godot with WebSockets using a microcontroller like an ESP8266 or the more powerful ESP32 version. I might actually do that in the future, so if you want to see it, let me know in the comments below. Now let's move on to the implementation. To test the gamepad, we'll need a simple game, so I've already set up something. I won't go over all the details, I've just set up enemies spawning randomly and going towards the bottom of the screen. The player is a kinematic body 2D and has two functions, move and fire, to control his position and his weapon. We'll use these functions later when receiving data from the phone. I created a node called WebSocket Server to which I attached a script to run the server. It's mostly the same code as the example from the Godot docs. In the ready function, we connect the various signals that the WebSocket server will emit. At the end, we start the server by listening to port 9080. In the process function, we call server.pol. This is to make the data transfer and signals update. I've created three custom signals that I will emit when needed. That way, the WebSocket server node is doing its thing on its own, and we can connect these three signals to get updates. The signal connected is fired when the WebSocket connects is made, disconnected when the connection is stopped, and new axle data when there's data available. In the onData function, we get the packet from the peer and send it through the new axle data method. Note that we are calling getString from UTF-8 because we are sending the data as string encoded in UTF-8. We'll see that in the client code. In the game script, in the onWebSocket server new axle data, we parse the data as JSON and get both the axle accelerometer values and the fire button state. Depending on their values, we can call player move or player fire. Now that we've seen how to get the data and use it, we can go to the other project, the accelerometer gamepad. The nodes in this project are basically grouped in two. When we first launch the app, we see this connection screen. There's a text edit where you can input the server's IP address. In the background, the port used will always be the same we defined for the server, so 9080. Once the connection is made, we can hide the screen and we'll see the gamepad scene. We'll see the server's IP in the top left with the connection status in the top right. In the center, the bubble will show the accelerometer inclination in the x-axis. And finally, the fire button. Just like for the server, I've created a node for the WebSocket. And again, the code is mostly the same as the one found in the docs. Same as before, in the ready function, we connect the various signals. Closed and connected functions are pretty much the same as with the server. And just like before, we call client.pol in the process function to update the WebSocket. I made a function called connectWS, which will simply call client.connect to URL with the URL entered in the text edit. I've kept on data as it was in the example, but I'm not using it because the server is not sending anything to the client. The most interesting function is send data, which takes data and send it to the server using client dot get peer one dot put packet. We make sure to convert the data to string and encode it as UTF-8 as this is what the server is expecting. In the gamepad script, the main thing is happening in the process function and in the onfire button pressed function. Basically, each time we want to send data, we create a dictionary with Axel and fire as keys. In Axel, we will put the result of input dot get accelerometer dot normalized dot x. In fire, we simply simply put true when the button is pressed. Each time we call ws.sendData, 
using json.print to turn our dictionary into a string. ws is the reference to our WebSocket client node. I've chose to structure my data with a dictionary because I find it easy to understand and also easy to expand. You could, for example, add another key named reload that would represent a reload button. And with that, we have everything set up. First, I launch the game and I can see that I'm not connected to any client. Then launch the app on the phone. The IP is pre-filled with the server so I just click connect and I can see I'm connected to the server. On the game we can see the phone's IP and that we're connected. If I move my phone from left to right we can see our player move left and right and if I press the fire button the game starts and my player starts shooting. As you can see it's pretty responsive and I can tell you I don't feel any noticeable lag. You could test it with more demanding game but the latency induced by the websockets should be totally acceptable. I hope you like this video. As always you can find all the sources on my github link in the description if you just want to try the game and the wireless gamepad i've released both the desktop and mobile version to my github if you want to discuss more about this video see what i'm working on or talk about game dev or just hang out join us on my discord server just scan this qr code or use the link in the description i'll see you on the next video thanks for watching bye